Right, so this is the third part of the lecture. So after learning about social schema and how uh, individuals form uh, prototypes according to the schema, to, to their schemas, then we're now reaching the topic of a stereotype. So this is, uh, that was, uh, that, that is how uh, stereotypes uh, originated, yeah? So basically, so we're now trying to explain how stereotypes is formed and what's the implication and why uh, individuals uh, put stereotypes on certain social groups, yeah? So basically, stereotypes is a mental template, yeah, that we use to reduce complexity. When, especially when you have no meaningful information is available, and the only information that is available is the social groups where those individuals that you met belong to, yeah. So for example, if you don't really know me, yeah, as a person, but you know that I live in Rungkut, then you would see that I'm not, I'm not a friendly person, I'm a very unfriendly person, then those available, uh, those available information uh, would, uh, would attend, uh, would make you uh, think that every Rungkut person would behave like me, exactly like me. So all Rungkut who, uh, all people who lives in Rungkut would be unfriendly <laughs> like Bu Amel, for example. And if stereotypes uh, leads to prejudice, when you see someone uh, like me, for example, then you generalize, yeah, to, uh, then you generalize my bad behavior to uh, my bad behavior uh, to everyone that belongs to the same group members as I am. Then it would lead to prejudice, yeah. So when you see when you see me as an unfriendly person, then you think that every rungkut, every some, every every living uh, living beings who lives in rungkut. <laughs> would be unfriendly like Bu Amel, for example, then it leads to um, uh, the prejudice, and this is not, not this is not a good thing. It, this would entail social problems. And when it leads to a more hostile form of, of, of uh, hostile form of stereotypes, which is the discriminatory behavior, this would also cause, uh, cause uh, lots of problems, yeah. So when you think that uh, every living person who lives in Rungkut is unfriendly like Bu Amel, then when you see someone who also lives in Rungkut, you would avoid them because you think then they because you think that they are unfriendly just like Bu Amel. <laughs> yeah. So that would also this uh, that would also lead to discriminatory behavior. So you would discriminate people um, solely or merely because they are they belong to certain social groups. Yeah. So uh, why stereotype happens and how it happens, yeah. So when you uh, see similarities, yeah, similarities between person that belongs on the same social groups, and you would see that those characteristics this uh, does not exist in other social groups, and when you think that those categorization is important to you, then it would lead to uh, perceptual accentuation. Then it would lead to stereotypes. Yeah. So when you think that every every person who lives in Rungkut would share similarity, yeah, well, which are they are uh, unfriendly, just like Bo Amel. Then you think that people who lives in other uh, other uh, kecamatan such as Medoan Ayu, for example, Medoan Ayu people are not as unfriendly as people who lives in Rungkut. Then you would see intra category similarities, which means that people who lives in Rungkut they share similarities. But then when you compare people who lives in Rungkut and people who lives in Mendoan Ayu, for example, they don't share similarities. There are differences, meaningful differences between those two groups, which me it means that it would accentuate your perceptual, that your perception about those groups, and it would enhance, yeah, it would, uh, it would advancely improved when you think that those categorization is important. So when you think that being friendly is important, yeah, important characteristics when you're trying to look for a friend, for example, then it will lead to stereotypes. Yeah, so that's the idea. So, so when you think that there are uh, shared similarities between uh, a group of people who belongs to the same social groups, and when that characteristics is fundamentally different, when you compare those social groups with other social groups, which mean there are uh, intercategory differences between those uh, groups and when you think that it refers to uh, reverse to the those categorization and it in enhanced because you put more value yeah, you put more value on that category 
because you think that being friendly is important yeah in in, in an interaction then it will lead to stereotypes so this is the mechanism how stereotype happens yeah and why so what's the reason why people uh, form stereotypes about about certain social groups there are several good reason why yeah it happens naturally uh, because you know we're lazy yeah uh, we're actually we're lazy thinker we try to uh, look for shortcuts yeah to form conclude to form a conclusion especially when you have no information available very little information to make an impression to make a judgment about other people yeah so um we hate uh, uncertainty we don't like that we uh, we like uh, something that is predictable, that is very human, yeah? So that's why we sometimes we rely on stereotypes because we hate uncertainty. We try to reduce that. We try to make our social environment more predictable. And stereotypes would, get, would, would <laughs> indeed give you that, yeah? So when you have an information that you truly believe, yeah? That you truly believe that those qualities are inside a person yeah that is a member of certain social groups then it would be predictable for you so when you are interacting to this with this person then it is easier for you to to predict what would happen next yeah in the social interaction so yeah, yeah so it reduces complexities it produces uncertainty as well so it also uh, um, apart from that it also helps you to justify social role yes for example if you truly believe that uh, everyone who lives in room code is unfriendly yeah unfriendly and perhaps um very strict yeah of course uh, strict and unfriendly then maybe you would justify that uh, to make them uh, to make your friends who lives in room code as a sexy acara in, 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 in a comedy yeah because you believe that those who in control of an event yeah those persons should be very strict and unfriendly because they don't really uh dis disturbed they don't they are not really dis uh, disturbed by the by the complaints and they could be they could be easy it, it could be easier for them to be assertive for example yeah and you would say that i'm not sure that people who lives in rumkut would be suitable to become the chair of the committee because they are unfriendly yeah it's better for them to put it's better to put them as a sexy achara yeah in charge of the event because it's it is suitable for them because they are unfriendly and and too assertive and too strict in social interaction so we use that to justify social roles and of course uh, uh, as a consequences uh, by justifying social role based on stereotypes it would also justify power imbalance as well and you would not, someone would not approve uh, uh, of individuals who lives in Rongkot to be uh, to be at the chair of a committee, yeah, because it's the role of being in charge of the event, yeah, as a sexy achara would be more suitable, because this person, because it fits the role, yeah, it fits their role as a uh, as someone who is too assertive and too strict and too straightforward, then uh, we should put them in charge in the event, yeah, <laughs> and. It also explains the roots of intergroup conflicts as well. So when you see someone who lives in Rungkot and in Medoan Ayu when they uh, um, when they are in conflict, and you would see someone who lives in Medoan Ayu as a more uh, calm and uh, and and sociable than people who lives in Rungkot who is more strict and un unfriendly, for example, then you would use stereotypes to to explain why. People who lives in Rungkut and the other one lives in Madoan Ayu and they fight, they're fighting with each other. Oh, because of those characteristics. People who lives in Rungkut are uh, are unfriendly and they can be easily uh, angry. <laughs> but then people who lives in Madoan Ayu is more, is calmer and more set, uh, uh, more, um, more uh, sociable than people who lives in Rungkut. Yeah, so we use stereotypes to justify social conflicts. And it could be also, uh, it could also contribute to our positive feelings as a member of a uh, certain social group, yeah. So when there is a stereotype that people who lives in Madoan Ayu uh, as more, uh, as calmer, yeah, as calmer and sociable, more sociable than people who lives in Rungkot, then being a resident of Madoan Ayu would, would give you a positive sense because you belong to a positively, uh, positively, a positively uh, perceived <laughs> social group, yeah. So it gives you a sense of 
a sense of positive because you belong to uh, stereotypes of, uh, of a social group. Yeah, because stereotypes could be positive as well. Yeah, even though most likely it is negative, but it could be positive too. Uh, and that that what makes it different with uh, prejudice because prejudice is always negative. Yeah, there's no positive about prejudice. But when when we talk about stereotypes, it could be positive, but it could be ne uh, negative as well. Uh, and what we have known, yeah, uh, from I don't know four decades of research in social psychology, because as I have told you that uh, that stereotypes is one of the most researched topic in social psychology. Yeah, lots of social psychologists are interested in doing research in this topic. Yeah, even in Indonesia, yeah, where many many social groups are living uh, live, uh, living uh, aside with each other yes yeah, so of course when you do, when you're doing social psychology i think this is a very this is always a good theme this is always a good uh, topic to to be researched yeah, to be investigated so if you are ever interested in social psychology this is something this is a good uh, uh, good idea this is a good uh, theme or topic uh, to uh, to be investigated yeah uh, and from those four decades of research, we have came into several conclusions. And it's amazing, yeah, it's amazing that we could easily, yeah, could easily reduce one's complexities because we believe that every individual is a complex. They could be different in their personalities. They could be different in their motivation. Uh, their life experience completely different. Their uh, life span experience would be different but we could be easily it could be easily to reduce them to a very very few characteristics that we attach to their social groups where they belong yeah it's amazing but it happens we we we, we do that all the time yeah and stereotypes are slow to change but it's not impossible to change it it's possible to change it but it's very very slow to change yeah uh one um powerful idea one powerful intervention uh technique yeah one one powerful inter a social intervention to reduce uh, stereotypes uh, that is very well known and well researched in social psychology and lots of evidence proof back uh, it, a lot of evidence backed the idea of uh, this intervention and some people would say that it's extremely uh it is extremely powerful in changing stereotypes that is social contact. Yeah, so basically, if you want to change uh, stereotypes about certain social groups, then you have to increase the contact between those groups. So they have to be interacting with, you, with each other in order to uh, change the, the, the stereotypes. Yeah? Uh, but uh, uh, contact hypothesis theory yeah, uh, are extremely advanced. When in their research, there are specific information that I have left yeah, uh, in this course. And if you are interested in this topic, uh, we could uh, discuss in private, yeah, because I'm also interested in this uh, theory as well. And also, without context, it could be changed as well, yeah. So stereotypes can be changed without context, but it it, it won't it it is not it does not change at individual level, but it's more in a mac in a more macro level, yeah, in a in a social level in a societal level. Yeah, it responds to basically wider social, political, and even economic challenges. Yeah, and it is quite complex. Yeah, when we talk about societal change, because that involves uh, different sets of theories from other disciplines. But basically, in, in the theories, it could happen. But how it happens and how uh, the, how the, uh, how we explain the mechanism underlying these changes could be extremely complex because we need to borrow. Uh, several concepts, other theories from uh, other disciplines, including sociology. And stereotypes can be more pronounced, yeah, when, and even more hostile, and therefore very difficult to change when conflicts happen. I think this is quite common sense here. Yeah? When uh, people who live in Rungkot and Madoan Ayu are in conflicts, in a tense conflict, then stereotypes would be, uh, stereotypes or prejudice between those two groups would be greatly increased and it's extremely difficult yeah, to change that and you cannot easily implement contact social contact between these two groups because those two groups are in conflict <laughs> so it's it's even more difficult yeah, to change stereotypes when uh, when intergroup conflicts happened 
And we're not talking about accuracy here. It doesn't matter whether stereotypes is accurate or not accurate. Yeah, so we're not talking about that. But what's more important for social psychologists is that how individuals use stereotype, how we use that to make sense of intergroup relations. So how we use that to regulate our interaction with people from different social groups. Yeah, so it doesn't matter whether it's accurate or not. And basically, uh, individuals tend to believe what they want to believe, yeah, and they overemphasize, uh, overemphasize the present and present bias, yeah. So, when you uh, find an evidence, yeah, when you find an evidence that that amplify your stereotypes, for example, that that that, amp your, uh, that, that amplify your perception with uh, about social uh, one social group, for example then you would ignore all information that contradicts that. Yeah. So, for example, if you have a stereotypes uh, that people who live in Rungkut are unfriendly, yeah, then you will then you meet uh, one person, one Rungkut person, and he is and they are unfriendly and they are unfriendly, then it will it would amplify your stereotypes. It would confirm your stereotypes. And you would try to ignore all information that contradicts your belief. Yeah. So that's uh, how our cognition uh, works, yeah. We tend to overemphasize uh, facts that uh, that confirm our prior belief, and try to ignore, <laughs> try to ignore other information that contradicts our belief. So it doesn't matter whether it's accurate or not, yeah. And some of you may ask, um, uh, when it actually forms? So when is the first time you form a stereotypes? Yeah. Uh, some social psychologists believe that it is. Uh, it is it is formed uh, at a very early age, yeah, at least in a in a school age. Uh, even though uh, individuals doesn't have uh, they don't have a prior experience with those social groups, it could be formed as well. Stereotypes can be formed in that condition because we we use information from socialization uh, from socialization process to form these stereotypes. So if you if you want to form a stereotypes about people who lives in Rungkut, uh, having an interaction with someone who lives in Rungkut is not necessary. Yeah, having an information from your parents. Yeah, so your parents told you that people from Rungkut are unfriendly would be enough. Yeah, to form stereotypes about people who lives in Rungkut. And okay, so this is the last part of this uh, of this part, <laughs> the last uh, section of this part. Yeah. And this uh, theory is rather, I would say, at uh, one of the latest theory that explains stereotypes. Yeah. Uh, so it concerns on the substance, yeah, the the contents of our stereotypes. So this uh, this this the theory is uh, was proposed by uh, Susan Tiske, and basically she said that uh, uh, every stereotype contains two dimension. Yeah, two dimension. That is, the first dimension is warmth. Uh, the worth of the relationship and the second dimension is competence yeah so we try to form stereotypes based on those two dimension yeah and her research uh, was based uh, on the U in the USA so uh, it could be different in our context but uh, some of it would be extremely helpful to explain uh, to explain um, uh, to explain some of the intergroup intergr features in Indonesia, yeah. So the first dimension from this confusion matrix is that when you see someone, when you see a social group that has low competence but high warmth, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you see the person from these groups as being friendly, yeah, being warm. They are, you can trust them, but they have low capability. They have low competence, yeah. And low assertiveness. Low. They don't really assert. They don't. Uh, they don't assert, uh, They are not assertive. For example, then the emotion that evoke from interacting with those people would be uh, pity and sympathy. In the U.S., yeah. In the U.S., uh, the social groups that are attached to this uh, to this dimension to this condition is is Itali are Italians and Irish. Yeah. Um, then. Uh, the second dimension is that when you see a social group that that has high competence but and also high warmth, yeah, and the emotion that evoke here yeah, from those interaction would be pride and admiration. 
And in the United States, uh, social groups that are associated with these conditions are including Americans, Canadians, and Christians. And it's not surprising because, you know, the participants of this research are mostly white Americans and they tend to favor their in-groups uh, disproportionately, yeah. So they tend to evaluate uh, uh, those, in the, uh, evaluate individuals that are like them more positively rather than someone uh, who, that, who are not like them, yeah, who are very dissimilar to them, yeah. And then... Uh, as you see here as well, yeah, in this uh, second, uh, in the, the first uh, dimension is that at Italians and Irish, they they share sim lots of similarities with 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 white Americans, and um, but uh, in other dimensions, for example, in low competence and low warmth, yeah, this is uh, the uh, this is where the most prejudiced social group in uh, social groups in the U.S. are. Yeah, you can see here people, uh, Latino people. Or African, Afro, uh, Amer Afro Americans people and Muslims people are associated with this uh, dimension. So most uh, white Americans, yeah, here in uh, who participated in this research, they perceive uh, Latinos, Afro Americans, and Muslims as being uh, as having low competence and low warmth. And th this is why the emotions that evoke uh, from the interaction would be discussed and condemned. And this is why people. Uh, this is why uh, the, these three, three groups are often uh, discriminated against. And if you, uh, as you also have heard from uh, recent news, that there are huge social movement uh, that that counter uh, that counter the, the, the social condition, yeah. Yeah, the Black Lives Matter. And this is what happens basically. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then the last part. I think this is one of the most interesting, uh, most interesting characteristics yeah. of certain social yeah. groups. So, so uh, some social uh, uh, white Americans basically seeing uh, Asians, yeah, Asians. I mean, the, and in this context, is is Asians, uh, Jews, British, and Germans as social groups that has high competence but low warmth, yeah. And this is why the uh, emotion that evoke from interacting with this uh, interacting with people that belongs to the social group is inviting jealousy yeah as a researcher who concerns on conspiracy theory yeah so i uh, i'm interested in researching uh, conspiracy theory a uh, social group that are always associated with many many conspiracy theories are often uh, social groups that uh, are in the second dimension here yeah in the in the last uh, to the dimensions here. So this is not. Uh, this is why it's not surprising that you may heard a conspiracy theory about Jews, or maybe in the United States there are lots of conspiracy theories circulating about Black Lives Matter and also uh, conspiracy theories about Muslims. Yeah. So when it uh, when a social group uh, are associated with low warmth, it's very possible that uh, many uh, many conspiracy theories would be attached to the social groups. Right, so that is the end of the third part of this lecture. So we're moving to the last part uh, of the of the this week's lecture, and that concerns on how individuals respond to social schema and how we use our schemas differently.